This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! Why hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow to a review of the winner of the community poll. This is the review for Voyager Class Legacy Bulkhead. A bit of an odd duck in that this was supposed to be the Prime Universe, according to the box. And, uh, well, look at this guy. I'm not seeing it. I mean, sure, he's green and he's chunky and all, but as a wise person once said, Legacy Bulkhead shares closer similarities with the animated incarnation of Bulkhead and that potentially they could have easily sold this toy as a more faithful translation of that character rather than the Prime version. And you know what? Thanks to our little chat over on TFN page 101's channel, I'm inclined to agree. I mean, the whole legacy shtick seems to be multi-dimensional characters from different continuities stepping over into a g one take of that particular character, so despite the box clearly saying Prime, let's look at this from an animated take. Legacy Bulkhead comes in a green army truck that most closely resembles a Raba H-18. Not perfectly, mind you, but this is kind of what Generations is known for. Not perfect, but close representations of vehicles. I mean, except for Wonder Boy here. But even so, just look at this thing. It's rife with details and paint for those details. Like, you've got these military-grade thick panels with rivet details and ridges and headlights and vent details and windows. I mean, this whole piece is cast in translucent plastic, which is actually sort of fine. I usually point out that there's nothing really to look at here, and that still sort of holds true, as there are his arms just hanging out here. Yet the placement of these arms actually sort of works as maybe passing off his interior bits, which is kind of interesting to look at. But going back to the windows, they just look so nice. They got windshield wipers, and around the windows are all picked out in a matte black paint like it's the rubber seals around the windows, and it makes the wipers just pop. Like, oh, it just looks so nice. You've got these big industrial sized fuel tanks which look right proper in contrast to something like the baby tanks found on Earthrise Prime. Like these look like they hold a lot of fuel. I dig it. You've got bed detail on the side. The molding of the fabric canopy is such that you can make out the frame that supports the canopy, which takes us right to the back where toes are folded up to look like a tailgate. It's not a perfect one, mind you, as if it was, they'd do some sort of folding out to look like a solid piece of the back, but hey, I'll take what they did. It looks really good. As for accessories, it comes with two storage for which can be placed inside the canopy with its myriad of 5mm ports in the truck bed. And if you want it outside the vehicle though, I mean you can attach the mace end of the canopy as some sort of weather system measuring device or whatever you want to pretend that is. The Gatling gun can side mount if you want to charge into battle in the most heavily armored vehicle in the fleet. The wheels are 5mm ports so you can hit people with hubcap flamethrowers. Or you can even equip them with a boot if some drunk designated driver abandons him at Austin J. Tobin Plaza. Loads of ports. Loads of options. For size comparison, here's Classic Bumblebee, Earthrise Prime, Studio Series Ratchet, and Earthrise Prowl. Conversely, here's Studio Series Bumblebee, Legacy RC, Earthrise Prime, and Studio Series Ratchet. As for actual scale, it's kind of all over the map, but uh, here's the H18 dimensions, here's this guy's dimensions, and that all averages out to this. So here's G1 Trailbreaker. And out of curiosity, I wanted to see what the scale was like if just honoring the width, and here's Studio Series Dropkick. And that just looks kind of weird. So that was vehicle mode. In short, Bulkhead is a really nice vehicle. It's not perfect, but there's a lot of love it seems poured into this vehicle to make this big and bulky military industrial-esque thing. I love all the details thrown into this and honestly just like it for the fact that it's something different. Don't get me wrong, I love the cars in this series, but I often find there's rarely ever other types of road vehicles. It's either cars or Optimus, sometimes vans, sometimes trucks. On the odd time you get a motorcycle, but it's primarily sports cars and Optimus. To get a completely new type of vehicle, one that you can even convert over to say a garbage truck if you really want to, is just so much fun, and I love it to bits. The Transformers will return after these messages. This episode of Lazy Eyebrow is brought to you by Ridge.com. Ridge.com is the place to go if you're on the market for a wallet with a focus on compact form factor and excellent function. And they come in a variety of different colors too, like this carbon fiber wallet, or this aluminum steel navy blue case. And hey, that's not the only thing they offer these colors in. Check out this key case that also comes in aluminum navy blue. If you're like me at all, and the sound of your keys jingling in your pocket as you walk down the street irritates you with every new step, a new nightmare, as that incessant jingling noise just triggers your sensory processing issues with every single start and turn, then this is a great product for you, as not only does it do that, but it also keeps your wallet and your keys together as a very compact thing right in your wallet for as much space as you can handle. 
Feeling in the mood for both? Well, good news! They offer a Daily Driver Bundle Kit. Combo Power! Use the link ridge.com slash lazy eyebrow to get yourself 10% off that Daily Driver Kit. Double Combo Power! So head on over to ridge.com slash lazy eyebrow to pick up your bundle kit today! We now return to the Transformers. So on to transformation. Start by removing the canopy. Separate the front from the back by pulling on it. Unfold the toes and separate the legs. Unclip the gas tanks and straighten the legs. Open the truck bed and fold away the gas tanks, then close the bed back up. Swing this hinge on the waist back, then plug in this black piece to make up more of the waist. Open up the cab and pull down the arms. Fold down this black piece and start rotating up the head. Fold the spare tires together and push them up through this opening. Separate the shoulders, then push them up at the back. Push the cab down and tab the shoulders into the sides of the cab, then push down this back piece. On the inside of the cab, you'll find a port, which will plug into the waist like so. And robot mode. And good grief, what a tank! Like, we all know Bulkhead to be this burly football player type physique, built like a tank basically, and this is just hitting it for me. Like, he's got that massive underbite that definitely feels more Prime inspired than it does animated, I'll give it that. But I really like it for that G1ified take they were doing. It just feels right to me. I love that he's also just unapologetically rocking the front of a cab for a torso. Like Prime, without having to tuck parts away. Or like Inferno, but without having to sacrifice vehicle for a more Toon-inspired robot. That has left the figure with a ton of negative space on the interior of the chest, which could be considered a negative to some. But like, you really gotta be looking for it. Me personally though, I'm not bothered by this choice at all. This is the vehicle as a torso. Whether you like it or not, he's a transformer. He comes from a big monolith of a truck, and he's not ashamed to show that off. And that's the kind of design philosophy I live for in these toys. To go with that though, I wish the forearms had been a bit bulkier to accommodate the size of the torso, but they're tolerable as is. I love the front wheel being adorned on the shoulder, as well as the spare tires being stored the way they do. It's compact and aesthetically pleasing like parts removed for function and form factor. The back features support where you can plug in the canopy if you so desire, and joints allow you to display it folded back or wrapped around like a cape. Options are neat. The legs are properly chunky with all sorts of thick armor plated detail going on in both the green and the silver. Rivets and ridges abound, like it looks really, really good. Looks thick and durable and industrial. And going on that unapologetically a truck notion, I love that the wheels are displayed here. I love that they're not trying to be hidden away, like the way primes these days feel the need to rotate the legs back and make the wheels a little less conspicuous, or how modern masterpiece takes just hide them all together. Not that either of those things are bad, I just love it here for Bulkhead. Speaking of hiding things altogether, by the way, look at the back of those legs. They're solid the whole way around, and do you see gas tanks hanging off anywhere hindering mobility? Nope! And they're not tucked into the calves, looking kind of tacky and viewed from this angle, or worse yet, hidden with a faux part pretending that they're still there. No, they're cleanly tucked away into the leg, making that part of the robot denser while still retaining a clean form factor, without the gas tank part hanging off somewhere cluttering up the place. Top to bottom, I love what they've done here. It's a solid vehicle with a little bit of sacrifice that transforms very smartly into a fully functioning robot with decent proportions and again, little sacrifice, or at least to me there was. I very much enjoy it's been presented overall. As for accessories, again, you get the canopy. It folds open in addition to having a two-way 5mm peg that can fold flat for storage. And with all these pegs and bulkhead ports, you get tons of options. You can plug it into the shoulder for style points. You can plug it into the forearm and look through the cutout to protect all your important gutly bits from enemy firepower. Do the exact opposite and bolt it to the leg while you wait for the bomb to go off so that you can walk away from the explosion. Or bolt it to the bottom of your foot and provide moral support to your comrades while protecting them from a grisly death aboard their own ship. Lots of ways to have fun with the shield. He also comes with a mace end attachment. This plugs into the hand and closes over top. This also makes me wonder why this never happened for Prime and his axe. This is the perfect way to go about doing that. What's nice about it though is it's covered in 5mm ports, so that's, that's how with a few minor adjustments you can turn a regular gun into five guns. Or use all the ports and turn Bulkhead into a one-man army. Go nuts with the guy. Finally, you get this Gatling gun presented to us in translucent blue. First off, I don't know why he got this at all instead of the second mace, but all right, I guess. Second, I'm not super fond of this translucent energy-infused weaponry. It just doesn't look good to me. Like they had extra room on the clear plastic mold and just chucked the accessory onto it, because why not? It's a feature, not a bug. Much worse, though, is when they chuck the entire accessory figures onto there. That's gross. But it's not the worst thing in the world when looked at on its own. It's even got extra ports, so... That That's how, with a few minor adjustments, you can turn a regular gun into three guns. As for articulation, the head spins, but the recessed neck port makes only for limited left and right range, and in general it only tilts a little bit up and down. Shoulders spin, arms go out, 
biceps rotate, and elbows bend a considerable amount for being single jointed, and the hands rotate. Waist spins, legs go all the way forward and back and all the way out. There's thigh rotation, toes go forward, heels go forward, the whole foot has an ankle. I mean, it's all really well articulated. The only real drawback is that the knee to thigh ratio isn't all that great, but that's kind of my only downside. Like, man, for such a large, lumbering, chonk monster of a robot, he just moves so well. For size comparison, here he is with the other cab torso robots, like Optimus and Inferno. And here he is with Earthrise Prowl, Earthrise Optimus, Animated Jazz, Studio Series Ratchet, and Netflix Bumblebee. Also seen here with Earthrise Wheeljack, Legacy RC, Studio Series Optimus, Studio Series Ratchet, Studio Series Bumblebee, and Earthrise Smokescreen. As for the actual scale, you get G1 Trailbreaker and Studio Series Dropkick again. So that was Bulkhead. I was excited for the figure before I knew it was even Bulkhead. I saw Industrial Cab Over Truck and was sold. Did these expectations hold up? I'd say so. I love the way the transformation works, and you wind up with this really nice looking robot. I love that it's a new vehicle with the back of the car that is just feet hanging off the back, but are appropriate for that to be the case. I love that the torso is so flippant about it being a large vehicle. He doesn't care what you think, he's making it work! So yeah, super glad this guy won the poll. I remember feeling excited when this guy was announced, but ended up getting a lot of figures that day Bulk had arrived and never gave him a proper look. And had not been for this review, I probably would have forever looked over this gem of a Voyager figure and never really appreciated its true quality. This has been the Lazy Eye. <laughs>